method. Hello, beauty friends. I am Meredith Roddy from Beautalon and Artistic Wire. Welcome to another Michael's Community Classroom class. Today, we are going to be making a multi-strand bracelet. And of course, I can't start beading a multi-strand bracelet without also talking all about beading wire, crimping, proper crimping techniques, and peppering in some fun tips and tricks for jewelry making as well. One of my biggest challenges as a jewelry maker is sizing bracelets. So we're going to talk a little bit um, as we are making about how to figure out what size should I make my bracelet and a couple of um, of ideas of making adjustable bracelets to take the, the stress and the worry out of making sure that you have the absolute right size for your bracelet. So um, when, as I'm going along, if there's something that I'm a little fuzzy on, I wasn't quite as clear as I could be, go ahead in that chat and um, drop a little note, say, Marth, can you be a little, a little clearer? Can you clarify what you're talking about? Or if you have a specific question, go ahead and put that in the chat as well. I'm looking down, <laughs> down to see um, all of the comments that are coming through. If you are watching on the replay, please feel free to fast forward through the chit chat, rewind through the specifics, um, and generally just um, enjoy learning how to make jewelry. If you already know everything about crimping and laying out a design, hopefully there'll be a couple little nuggets here in class for you as well. Um, I mentioned a YouTube rewatch. If you are just joining me in class for the very first time, please go ahead and introduce yourself in the comments. I've been doing this for the Michaels Community Classroom for quite some time now, but it's always wonderful to welcome new people to our group. There is a handout for our class today, and hopefully Nicole um, can post that in the comments if she hasn't already. It will also be available um, in the link underneath the YouTube video, and currently it is right on the class page, on the Michaels class page, um, uh, their, web, their web page, I should say. All right, I think I have taken care of all of the business that I need to welcome Minnie. It's wonderful to have you here as a first timer. And a quick plug for all of the Michaels Community Classroom classes. Not only is there jewelry making, but scrapbooking and lettering and sewing and paper crafting and food crafting and all of the amazing and crafts that are available in the Michaels Isles and on michaels.com. So I highly recommend after class today, go ahead and head over to that Michaels YouTube channel and rewatch because, oh my gosh, what a wonderful resource that our friends at Michaels have given to us. The ability to learn from amazing instructors and um, spark our creativity and inspire us to be better makers. So without further ado, let's go ahead and chip that camera down. I think we've got our good crowd here. It's wonderful to have everyone. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. So you'll see here on the bead mat, I have the bracelet that was featured in the community classroom. Um, and this is what we are going to be making today. It is a five strand bracelet and I'm using a connector to connect all of my strands together. I'm also ending everything with a crimp, a crimp bead. Actually, I use crimp beads in this project and a wire guardian. So that is what we are going to be doing today. We're doing a lot of stringing. We're going to be doing a lot of finishing and a lot of crimping. So if your crimping technique isn't quite perfect, hopefully by the time I do 10, <laughs> we will have everybody confident in their crimping. Now I have a hook and an eye clasp here on my bracelet, but we're going to talk also about um, different clasp options and using an extender chain. I mentioned in the beginning, talking about different ways of sizing our bracelet. When I do my example, I'm going to put on an extender chain so that maybe my wrist the or the wrist that the person that I am designing this bracelet for is six and a half inches. Maybe it's eight inches. I might not know. So an extender clasp is a really good way of mitigating that challenge in jewelry making. Before we get started, though, 
I would like to take a moment, if you will indulge me, and just talk a little bit about different beading wire. When you walk into the Michael's aisle, or the Michael's beading aisle, it can be very daunting. There are a lot of products. There are a lot of um a lot of different stringy materials. There's leather, there's cording, there's elastic. How do you know what to choose? Well, at Beadalon, which is where I am currently employed, we make the wire. So this wire here is stranded wire that is coated with nylon and is um, what we recommend for long lasting durable jewelry. And when you get into the Michaels aisle and you start dr drilling down, you'll see that there are a lot of different varieties within the different categories of products. And today I'm going to be focusing solely on bead beadalon bead stringing wire. So let's start at the very beginning. We have seven strand, we have 19 strand, and we have 49 strand. And what that refers to is the number of individual strands of wire that are bundled together and coated with nylon. So 49 strand is going to be your best beading wire. 19 strand is going to give you better flexibility. It's going to be the kind of the middle of the road beading wire. Seven strand wire is good flexibility, but... I recommend seven strand for perhaps when you're just starting out, you're not quite sure you wanna take a deep dive into jewelry making. It is going to be your, um, your most economical jewelry stringing product. However, when you are ready for, your, for professional designing results, 49 strand is going to be where you want to go. Um, there's a very good question in the chat. I just want to address really quickly. Are we able to obtain a copy of this recording emailed to us? Michaels does not email the links after the classes. However, um, tomorrow in about 24 hours, this class will be posted on the Michaels YouTube channel. So if you go to um, YouTube and then just search up Michaels, it will be one of the very first newest classes um, and you'll be able to, to fast forward and rewind to your heart's content. Today's project, I'm going to be using 19 strand. And the reason why I chose 19 strand is this right in the middle. I like using 19 strand for bracelets. Um, it's just kind of a, a good sweet spot. Um, the second thing, after we look at the 719 and 49 strand, the second most important thing when you're thinking about which wire to choose for your design is the diameter, okay? So I have three different diameters here, 015, 018, and 024. Now it's important to know, and I'm just gonna see if I can bot my camera down just a scotch. I don't think I quite can. It's important to note that 49 strand is also available in 015 and 018. 19 strand is also available in 015 and 024. So these diameters are not just attached to these strand constructions. But it's important to note the diameter because that is what is indicating how thick your wire is. And the rule of thumb when you're jewelry making is you want your bead, your, I'm sorry, you want your wire to fill the holes of your beads as much as possible. That eliminates friction. It eliminates wires um, and beads rubbing against each other. It just is the, the foundation for good jewelry making. Now, the next important thing on the label, see, we, we do a good job of giving you all of the information that you need to know right here on the label if you know where to look for it. These little, little guys right here, this is a crimp bead and this is a crimp tube. And on the wire, it tells you which crimp bead you want or if you prefer using a crimp tube, which crimp tube you want to use. There are four different sizes of each. I know we try, we've tried to make this as easy as possible. Once you know the basics, it really is very, very simple. 
but you want to make sure that you choose the right size. You can see it, there's a size one, a size two. Here is a size three, and this one is a size zero. So for today, I'm using my 018 wire. I'm going to choose a crimp bead. So I want to use a number one crimp bead. Okay, so I can put all of the other ones aside and I have my number one crimp bead. When you go into the Michaels aisle, into the findings, you will find crimp tubes and crimp beads that look like this. They do there's a little, just a little bit differently than we do at Beadalon um, with by millimeter. So these are crimp tubes. So if I'm going for a number two crimp tube, that happens to be a two millimeter crimp tube. So you, you just have to do a little bit of extra cross-referencing if you want to pick up the in-store crimp tubes or crimp beads. If you're going online and you find the Beetle on variety packs, that's what you know is going to correspond to what we've got labeled on our wire. Okay, so last things last, when we're talking about beading wire, we want to talk about a crimp tool, okay? And that's this guy. I'll put this one in the back because he has his, his coat on. There are three crimp tools. There is a micro crimp tool, a standard crimp tool, and a mighty crimp tool. Now, one crimp tool does not fit all, but the standard crimp tool is going to fit most. And that is what I recommend when you go into your Michael store and you're thinking, all right, I already talked about a lot of different things. What do I need for my beading project? The standard crimping tool is going to be what you need for today's project and for the size crimp tubes and beads that you would use for this wire. When you get it, into very big crimp tubes. You can see how big these guys are. Number four, that's where the mighty crimp tool comes in. Incidentally, this guy is also really, really helpful for closing crimp covers, which we will do if we have a little bit of time at the end. Micro crimp tool is for the little teeny tinies. Size zero here, these little guys, that's where you want to use the micro crimping tool. Janelda has a great question here in the chat. She says, which works best, crimp beads or tubes? I'm gonna answer my question, your question this way. It's whichever one works best for you. Crimp beads can sometimes be easier to crimp. Crimp tubes can sometimes be easier to crimp. I don't know which is going to be best for you. They, the mechanism by which they work is exactly the same. Some people find beads more pleasing to their eyes and easier to crimp. I personally use crimp tubes more often, but today in today's class, I'm actually going to go ahead and use crimp beads. So it's a long way of saying it's really your preference. If you really struggle with um, with one, try the other. It might be just what you need to really master and get ahead of crimping. So thank you for indulging me on my little, my little uh, treaties on beading wire. I think it's always good, the beginning of a class on bead stringing, and especially in the new year when we sometimes need a little refresher on things, to talk about beading wire and what all of the different numbers mean, especially if you're walking into your Michael store and you might be a little bit overwhelmed. So let's see. Okay, here's a great question Marguerite has. What wire diameter do you use if you use a variety, variety of beads with different diameters? That's a good one. I always choose the thickest wire that will fit through the smallest hole in my bead. It's um, There is a lot of room for wiggling in all of these different rules that we have in jewelry making, because sometimes you make a design that has beads with large holes and beads with small holes together. And in fact, this is a good example because these little rice pearls have very small holes. 
but these crystals have much, much bigger holes. So I chose the 018 because it goes through all of my beads. If I were just stringing with these larger um, crystal beads, then perhaps I might choose an 024. Um, I do have that luxury because I have a lot of spools of wire at my fingertips, but I always recommend to people when they are getting started that the best wire to, ch to choose if you're just going to go for one, right? Sometimes we just need to know what is the one wire that I should choose. I recommend starting with a 19 strand, a 18, and then you can kind of get a, bet a good feel for, do I want a thicker wire? Do I want a different wire? Do I want a wire that's a little bit more supple? Do I want a wire that's stiffer? Okay, I could go to that down the rabbit hole of talking about wire for the next hour, but that's not what this class is about. This class is about stringing. So let's go ahead and talk about the beads that I used today. So in the materials list for class that Nicole has posted a couple of times, and if you are catching us on the replay, it is posted down below. The, um, the beads that I used are these Chinese crystals and some rice pearls. And then I used as spacer beads, smaller crystals, and then these really pretty gold rectangles. But as I was remaking the bracelet for today's class, I ran out of rice pearls and I didn't quite have enough of these gold beads to lay out my whole design. So what did I do? I did what any good beater does. I did some substituting. So I went into my bead stash and I looked at all of the different beads that I had and that I had enough of. And I pre strung for everyone today. You're all very welcome. Did not need me to see me string up five strands of beads. But um, I chose similar sized beads. So my pattern actually ended up being just the same. And you'll see I'm working here on a bead board. These be particular bead boards are available online at michaels.com, not in stores, but Michaels does have some great bead boards, boards in the store as well. And when you use a bead board, you'll figure out which one you like to use the best. There are tons of different kinds of bead boards out there. This one I really like because it has four different channels in it. And that allows me to put a put together a multi-strand design. Um, Kathy has a great question. Yes, what you wanna look for to make beads bead holes larger is something called a battery operated bead reamer. Oh, question asked and answered. Thank you very much, Cindy, for putting that answer into the chat. Um, there are more classes on the Michaels site. Um, we are doing, Beatalon is doing two per month now. So I myself am doing one class per month. And then everyone's favorite wire worker, Sarah Lovecraft is doing one class per month as well. Um, and our next round of classes is posted. So go ahead and check that out when you have a moment. So like I said, I pre-strung up all of these, um, all of these strands. Um, and really what I did is I used the beadboard as my tool. Let me take some of these off so as not to get too distracted. And I just laid out the design. I just put um, the beads that I wanted and then added more beads and kind of moved things around a little bit. Uh, Excuse me. Until I had the design the way that I wanted it to be. And these little guys on the end, if you don't know about bead stoppers, if you get nothing else from this class, please consider putting bead stoppers on your uh, wish list for things to order in the future. They're little springs that have these, these fun little ends. Not all of them have the, the pink on the ends, but the ones that I use do. And these make it possible to pick up and move your beading strand around without worrying about your beads falling off. Oftentimes people, and I, I did too um, before bead stoppers were introduced to me, would use like a, a piece of um, 
of scotch tape on the ends that usually leaves a little bit of a residue that I'm not a super huge fan of. Um, another, uh, another idea is to use um, the little alligator clips. Those are good too. They tend to um, put little dinks, dings in my wire that I don't like. Um, lots of different, different solutions for, um, for keeping your beads on, but I definitely recommend doing something. Even if you tie, sometimes if I'm traveling and I don't want a lot of extra bulk and I'm working on something, I'll just tie a little knot in the end of my wire. It will pink it, but if it's just the, the very end of the, um, of the wire, it's that that's okay to me. And um, there's nothing more heartbreaking than stringing up all of your design and then picking it up or bumping, or maybe we have a furry friend at home that likes to help <laughs> us do our beading. The last thing we want is for beads to end up all over the floor. So I strung out my design and by luck and by planning, it's actually the exact same, the exact same length as my original. So I know for me, that's going to be the perfect length. I have to account for my spacer bar. I have to account for my wire guardians and I have to account for my clasp. I have done that already so that I, I know that that is what works best for me. Couple of tips before we get crimping. You could use a bracelet mandrel and know which part of the mandrel is right for your wrist. Then when you are doing your design, you can measure it out so it's right on the right part of the mandrel, okay? You can also use anything that you have in your home. If you have a pill bottle, a jar, um, anything that's round, that is going to um, to be a good thing to use. I know that, um, let me see, are there any behind the word here? Sometimes there are. Um, we have these specific mandrels for Beetalon that I know that the round one is the perfect size for my sister-in-law's wrist. So if I use, um, if I'm making her a stretch bracelet, I know that that's the perfect size to use for her. We have an oval one that's the perfect size for me. So I know if I'm making a stretch bracelet, that's the one that I wanna use. Another thing though, to keep in mind is you wanna make sure, especially if you are using larger beads, that you account for the inner diameter of your bracelet. Putting it down like this and measuring six and a half inches doesn't necessarily always mean that your bracelet is going to fit because the beads are going to take up a lot of room on the inside of the bracelet. So things to keep in mind as we are designing. So, all right, let's get started. Enough of that chit chat. I brought down my spacer bars and they are of course right here in front of me. So let me go ahead and move that off so as to not have too many distractions. I've already used two of these multi-strand connectors. These are great and they are on the wall in Michael's. Um, the part number, just in case anybody wants to see it, is right here. Um, and again, these are mentioned in the um, in the materials for the um, for the class. Now, something to be aware of, especially when you are using two components that are different on both sides. See, the back of this component is plain. Let's see how close we can get. It's pretty good right there. And the front is a design. So you wanna make sure that as you are doing your crimping, that you pay attention to making sure the design is face up on both sides. Now, why do I point that out? Well, clearly I have messed this up several times in my life and put the clasp on upside down. Is it the end of the world? No, but would I restring the whole thing? Probably. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to take one of my, actually, 
I'm going to take this one first because I do want to point out, oftentimes I will work right from the spool. And I do that for several different reasons. The first of which is maybe my design, I don't like it. Maybe I have decided, maybe I changed my mind totally. And if I cut a piece of wire, excuse me, if I cut a piece of wire, maybe I made it too small. Maybe I made it too big. This way, this really helps eliminate waste and conserves your wire. This stuff isn't, um, isn't you know, it's not going to break the bank, but we certainly don't want to spend money when we don't have to or waste wire when we don't have to. So working from the spool is a great way to conserve our, our wire usage. So two things that I need now. The first is my crimp beads because I know I'm using 19 strand 0 0.018 wire and my spool tells me right here to use a number one crimp bead and I've chosen crimp beads to use today and I am also going to use some wire guardians if I can find where I brought them down for last today. I know I had wire guardians at the ready. Just have to remember which little baggie my wire guardians ended up in. Hmm. Very interesting. You can account for all of the things, but then apparently your wire guardians are going to elude you. Does anybody see wire guardians down on my, on my place? It is very possible that they are still upstairs, but I'm nothing if not resourceful. So let's see if in my bag leaders, print, print covers and wire guardians, I might be able to find some really quickly. All right, they're not gonna be the right color, but at least I have found them. Perfect. So I didn't want to not show wire guardians today. And actually with the contrasting color, it'll be a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. I know, Cindy, what is it about those? Wire guardians and head pins. I never have enough wire guardians or head pins. All right. So before I do that, pro tip, sometimes people um, get these little spools and they have a little bit of a challenge getting the stopper out. This is what we want to do use our chain or bent chain of pliers in this instance and pull it out. Don't try to do it with your fingernails. It will only uh, lead to frustration. Um, you do just use your, your pliers and pull that, um, pull that top out. Always a good idea to put it back in. Can't tell you how many times I have lost a lot of crimp tubes or crimp beads by not putting my tops back on. <laughs> Definitely do not open them with your teeth. That is a good way to cause injury. So crimp beads and crimp tubes are pretty small, right? So you saw I'm working on a bead mat and I just picked it up right with my wire. I didn't try to pick it up and, and thread it on. All you need is just kind of guide that crimp tube onto the wire. And I'm going to go ahead. I just happen to have some hematite wire guardians were the first ones I grabbed. And what is a wire guardian, you ask? It's this little horseshoe-shaped piece of metal. And it has two tubes, one on one side and one on the other side. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to go up one tube around the top and down the bottom tube. Now I'm using a multi-strand bar. So depending on what my design is, will kind of inform where, where I start, but because I wanna make sure that my design and my bracelet is going across and none of my wires are, are crossing each other, I'm going to start on one side 
It just happens to be that side right there, okay? And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to thread that tip of wire back down through that crimp bead. Um, wire gradients come in two different sizes that I am aware of. Um, one for 95% of your wire needs. We actually recommend using um, the larger wire guardians for 0.024 wire, but I have never had a problem um, getting 024 wire through a wire guardian that's regular sized. So that is what I recommend for 90, probably 96% of your needs. If you're using more than one wire or a wire that's larger than 024, then the larger wire guardians are going to be your friend. I'm just trying to get a good, a good angle here. Let me get my fingers out of the way. The last or the next step, I'm going to come in here again with my bent chain nose pliers and very gently bring the tips of that wire guardian together. I'll show that a couple of different times. My camera is not, not picking it up so great right now. Um, not all designers will show that step, but I really like just bringing the legs together. I think it looks nicer and it, um, it also eliminates any scratches that might come here on um, on the sides of the wire guardian. It's a little piece of metal, so you want to make sure that um, that you're doing all you can to make sure that your jewelry is comfortable and looks nice. So here, what I'm doing is I am tightening this up so there's just a little bit of space in between that wire guardian and that crimp bead. I'm going to be adding crimp covers to this design. I didn't do that on my original design, but I thought it'd be nice to show crimp covers as well. So why not? So I'm leaving just about a millimeter of space in between the wire guardian and the crimp bead. Now I'm using my standard crimping pliers because I'm using a number one crimp bead. And you'll see if I can get a nice angle here. There are two spaces. One is a smooth space, the space that's closest to my hand, and one space that has a little dimple in it. Crimping takes three steps. The first step, you're going to come in the front of the pliers. The second, you're going to go into the back notch. And then the third, you're going to go into the front notch again. Now, what that front notch does is it creates a, an oval shape and it makes it easier to do the second part. Not all designers show that first part. And if they don't, I don't fault them. Um, but the inventor of the tool is the one that, um, that recommends the three-step process. So now I've gone in the front and I'm making sure here with my thumb, I'm holding those wires so that they're next to each other, not crossed. The wires are going to cross. They just want to. That's what they do. Um, it's the, their very nature. You want to hold them so that they're next to each other because if they're crossed, you run the risk of flattening those wires. And if you flatten those wires, those wires can break and that compromises the integrity of your jewelry. So now I'm going to come back here in the back notch of my pliers and I'm going to gently squeeze down and one of those wires is going to go on one side of that crimp bead and one is going to go on the other side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to that front notch of my crimp tube and I'm going to, again, gently squeeze down. And now I round around and I get that crimp tube nice and secure. Things I don't do, and those of you who have heard me give this talk many times know exactly what I'm going to say next. Resist the temptation to come in and squeeze anymore. You don't want to flatten that crimp bead or the crimp tube, depending on which you're using. Works, they work the exact same way. 
All that does is it breaks the wires and it weakens your jewelry. Now, oftentimes you can hide the wire in the first couple of beads. And I'm able to do that here in this design. Not always will you be able to do that, but I like going threading back through about three or four beads. It's not the end of the world if you cannot do that. Um, it's just, it's how I learned how to make jewelry and kind of the habit that I've gotten into. If these beads happen to have holes that were way too small, I'm not gonna sweat it. But I am going to come in here with my nippers. And I don't want to, of course, cut the longer wire. We've all been there. We've all done it. I just want to snip that shorter wire. And now I'm going to come around and do that second strand. Okay. Now I'm going to, I'm going to try to remember. She's got a lot, a lot going on here but I wanna make sure that I am lining up my, my uh, multi-strand end here, my connector, so that design on top, design on top, right? I don't wanna do it, so design not on top. And if, if that happens, just cut it apart and string it up again. It's not the end of the world. It does not take too much time because you've already, you already have your design all, all figured out. And sometimes if you're not paying attention, your beads will pop out of the wire and that's okay too. Just put them back in place. And this you can see here, I am using a lot less wire than on the strands that I pre-cut. Just gonna snip that off. Make my life a little, a little easier. So, here, I have a lot more wire that will unfortunately be wasted than the one that I'm working right off of the spool. Linda is asking, will I be in Tucson? Yes, I will. We just got the um, everything packed up and ready to ship this morning. And Beadalon has um, a show in conjunction with several other manufacturers. It's called the Mojo Show. You can check out all of the information at mojoshowusa.com. Um, but I will be in Tucson for a while. So hopefully, if anyone else will be in Tucson, feel free to, to drop me a line through, through the Facebook or the Instagram. And um, it would be great to see you. Oh, Cindy, that's wonderful. Okay. So let me talk through what I've been doing here on the other side. I double checked to be sure that my connector bar is on the right side. I put on a crimp bead. I put on my wire guardian. I went up around and through. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down through that crimp tube and back down through a couple of beads if I can. Again, if I can't, not the end of the world. But since I can, I'm gonna go through at least these, oh, I got three beads there, that's plenty. So now here is where I like to grab my chain nose pliers, bent chain nose pliers, and gently tighten this up. Okay, not 100% tightened here, but I'm going to, just like I did before, gently squeeze the ends of that wire guardian together and tighten this up. Now, a couple things. <laughs> Whenever I make a bracelet, and I can already tell that this is too, too tight, I want to make sure that I have wiggle room in here. It is oftentimes a tendency to make this as tight as humanly possible, but you don't want to do that. You need to put and to account for the wire having some room to move. You want your beads to have some room to move. This is especially important if you're using beads that have flat sides, like um, cube beads or rectangle beads or large beads or crystals, because what will end up happening is if you don't account for this movement in here, 
when you do go to make your bracelet into a round form, the beads will end up cutting your wire. They'll either break themselves in the case of whether if they're crystal beads or they will they'll cause enough friction on the wire to break it. So we want to make sure that we don't do that, right? We want our jewelry to last for as long as possible. Great question by Marguerite. How much wire do you cut if you pre-cut? And Cindy, again, asked and answered. Really good answer. I tend to err on a, on a longer amount. I'll do four, more, more toward the four inches um, extra because I like having more wire here to work with. Um, a couple of extra inches is really all you need. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure, just like I did on the other side, that I have enough room in here to account for my crimp cover, about a millimeter on top and a millimeter on the bottom. And again, I'm going to come in here with that three-part crimping. I'm going to come in the front of the crimper, in the back of the crimper, and back in the front of the crimper again, and round it out. So, and then the last step, it's always the most gratifying to me is coming in here with snippers or nippers and snipping that little tail off. So that's about as much waste. What is that? Maybe two, three inches of waste, but I needed those tails to really be able to construct my jewelry. Well, the last thing I want is working with, you know, a half of an inch of a tail um, because that's going to be frustrating to be able to get everything tightened up the way I want it to. So let's go ahead and do our next strand. Lucy, these are bead stoppers. And this is what they look like in the case, just in case you're looking for a, a case of them. These ones don't have the pink. You can see I have one here that has the pink and one that doesn't. The pink just happens to be a newer model. Both are available. So because I'm not working off of the spool of this one, and you'll see how much extra this is, I think these are about 10 inches. Mats are 10 by 13. So this is 13 inches, way too, way too long. Okay, so once again, one crimp bead up the wire guardian, down the wire guardian, and this is where things things can get a little fiddly. You just want to take your time, give yourself some, some patience, and make sure that you're remembering. There's a lot to remember until it's it's kind of by muscle memory um, to get all of these things in place. The one thing that I often forget and why I'm really driving the point home is, and mostly it's because I never think about crimp covers until after the fact, but I will often not account for that extra millimeter on either side that I need in order to put on my crimp cover. And um, we all have things that we that we always do um, when we kind of get into the groove of making jewelry. Um, and that's, that's one of mine. So here I picked up my Mighty Crimping Plier and you can see how much larger that jaw is than my standard crimping plier. Let me get these, put that down for a second. So you want to make sure that you're using the correct crimping plier. The mighties are not going to work with my crimp tubes. They're not just, or my crimp beads. They're not going to cut them or crimp them, excuse me, effectively or honestly at all. Um, likewise, if I were using, if I grabbed the micro by accident, it's going to mangle these crimp tubes. So you just, you really want to make sure you have the right size wire, the right size crimp tube, and the right size crimp tool for your beadwork. And I use crimp bead and crimp tube, the term interchangeably. All it does is refer to the shape of the crimp. I should just call them crimps. Keep it, keep it simple. All right, I'm gonna string these beads up. 
And even when I was making this design, somehow, or the original design, somehow I ended up getting my wires crossed, <laughs> literally. So, you know, it happens when you're just, if you're rushing or you're not paying quite as close attention, but you want to make sure that as you're doing this, and you'll see I lay it down a lot as I'm working on it to make sure that I know I'm going through this loop right here, not anything on this side. You want to make sure about um, that everything is lined up correctly. And what I did do, I hope, is double check and make sure that I strung everything up right. <laughs> I think so. I think I got everything. That's generally, especially if I'm doing something a little bit rushed, sometimes I will, um, I will miss a bead or I'll double up a bead and you just kind of have to, to go with it and give yourself forgiveness. All right. So now I want to make sure that I'm going through that second loop here. So just string that through, bring it around and back down and through the crimp bead. Now, I like using wire guardians for a couple of different reasons. They are not necessary, but they are helpful. Like a lot of things in life, not necessary, but helpful. They do a couple of different things. The first is that they help protect your wire because especially if you're really rough on your jewelry, wire has a tendency to rub in here and rub against the clasp. So this is providing an extra layer of protection against the, the friction of the movement of that clasp. We make wire, we think about this stuff so that you don't have to. Second reason is because it, especially on a design like this, it gives you equal distance between the clasp and the crimps. So if you do it long enough, you kind of get the eyeballs for making sure all of your loops are the same. But why take the risk? Why make our lives more difficult than it needs to be when the wire guardians can make sure that this spacing is consistent for all of the strands? And the third reason is I just like how they look, especially, for example, over here, I used bright wire, but you would never know that I used the bright wire because my wire guardians are gold. Likewise with silver, or we have, so I think there are six different colors of wire guardians in the beat along catalog now. Um, they just make your design look nicer right? It's more consistent there on the end. Really, when you um, when you are doing a multi-strand design, they come in really, really handy. Kathy, great question. Do you do the crimp covers as you go along or do you do them at the very end? Honestly, it doesn't really matter what I like doing when I'm designing jewelry or when I'm putting the jewelry together, especially when I'm making earrings, is I like to do each step together. So it kind of gets my hands into the rhythm of things. So I do things like remember to leave space in between for each and every one. Or I remember to squeeze the ends of my wire guardians together on each one. Um, it just, it's really a point of preference. Um, and you'll figure out what works best for you. Other people want to have, you know, one totally done and finished. Um, and that that's great. Also, sometimes I do it that way. Um, but I think that um, for me, at least doing each part together ensures that each one is consistent and looks the same. And that's important when you are doing a multi-strand design um, so that all of your strands look, look and look the same and are the same length. Because there's a little, there's a little wiggle room and a little room for error, but um not a terrible, terrible lot of room <laughs> for error. 
Okay. And this is, I'm going to do three and then we're going to go ahead and put on our crimp covers. So we are coming down the home stretch of class. So if anyone, as I'm doing this last one, can think of any other last minute questions, please feel free to throw those into the chat and I will see them as I am finishing up this step. like when there are no questions or, or maybe everybody is just furiously typing <laughs> and I'll have a barrage of questions in a moment. We shall see, please feel, feel free. And again, this class will be available tomorrow um, on the Michael's YouTube channel. And I definitely encourage you to watch it at, at your leisure, especially the crimping part um, and Again, when this gets a little a little sticky here, a little tight, I just pull on that end very gently with my chain nose pliers. And again, I want to make sure that I inch that the end of my wire guardians together. And I always want to double check and make sure that I have enough give in here so that my wire isn't stiff. Okay. And I am noticing that I had a little bit of extra wire. So I don't want extra wire. I want just enough wire. It is, it's a, it's an art. Um, and it does take practice to make sure that your bracelets and your necklaces are neither too tight nor too loose. So once again, two, two notches here. I'm coming in the front notch. Then I'm gently pressing down the back notch and I am coming back around in the front notch again. And I always recommend, especially for those of you who are new to jewelry making, the, um, the penultimate class that I have taught on crimping is uh, archived in the Michaels, on, on the Michaels YouTube channel. And it is called the five things you should never do when making beaded jewelry. And I highly recommend checking it out. Um, it's, it's a lot of information, but it is all of the information you need. So um, I definitely, definitely recommend when we're done um, to go ahead and, and check that one out, especially if you want to a little bit of a deeper dive into crimping. Uh, let's see. Hello. When using seed beads, I wonder what your thoughts are around double beading on each notch. I'm not 100% sure on double beading on each notch. Do you mean going back around and through the seed beads again? Um, you got to have to be very careful when you're when you're crimping against seed beads. I have a tendency to break my seed beads a lot um, if I'm not paying super close attention. Um, DM, if you could be just a little bit more specific in your question. All right. Crimp covers, the last thing for us to cover in the, in the last couple of minutes of, um, of class today, they are little themed beads. And what we are going to do is cover our crimps. Now, if you are a challenged person, crimper and you tend to mangle your crimps, um, crimp covers can be your best friend. Um, they can be a little, a little finagly and a little finicky, but you can see, I, I dropped it. I just picked it back up. What you want to do is you want to get that crimp onto your wire so that it is covering the crimp. I just want to make sure that we can really see what's going on here. Sometimes there we go. So that crimp is on the inside. Now, a couple different ways of closing a crimp cover. I used to use, nope, that's not the right one. Where is my mighty? Also a standard. That's what happens when you have too many tools out. Here we go. I used to use the smooth jaws of the mighty crimping plier. So not this back part that has the notch, but the front part that's smooth 
to close my crimp covers. Sometimes that works perfectly for me. I have found more recently than just a nice gentle squeeze with my chain nose pliers works really, really well. And it is not a one and done kind of a thing. I want to come around here and bring those ends together as well as I can. Sometimes I do my crimp covers perfectly. Other times I do not. That one wasn't so bad. Let's try another one, see what happens. You can see, I'll do these three and then we'll compare them to the other side. It really adds just that little extra finished look to your jewelry, especially if you are not as neat of a crimper as you will be. So again, I've, I had always used my mating crimping pliers, but I've really come around to using my chain nose pliers to close these guys. But the takeaway message is that there are a lot of different ways to achieve goals when we're making jewelry and a lot of different materials, a lot of different findings, a lot of different techniques. So if you, something isn't working for you, then try something else. If crimp covers aren't your bag and you can do awesome crimps, just stick with that. There's no saying that you have to do crimp covers. Really, these guys are really purely decorative. Ah, they are a little fiddly, as you can see. I got two on without too much trouble, but this last one, which should be the easiest one because it's on the end, was giving me a little, little agita there. All right, there we go. And there are different sizes of crimp covers and different styles of crimp covers. And if you want to get really fancy, I will oftentimes look for seamed beads, um, beads that have a seam in them that you can actually open up and make your own crimp covers. So that's a fun, that's a fun rabbit hole that I went down at one bead show one time. I was looking for seamed beads so that I could have fancy crimp covers. So I have one side that has crimp covers on it and one side that does not. So you can see the difference. It just becomes part of the design. Beads on two strands for each notch of the bead holder like the, um, this guy. So you would put more than one in here. You can do that for sure. Um, so last thing is last, and we'll just pretend like I have two extra, be extra things. Actually, what I'll do is we'll work on this one. So I have a hook and eye clasp on here. I'm actually going to take this clasp off. And in our last minute, I wanna talk about doing an extension chain rather than a clasp because this that way you can have a clasp that is adjustable so maybe I have a smaller wrist maybe I am making this as a gift for somebody whose wrist size I don't know very very simple to make an adjustable clasp all you need to do I've got two jump rings here this is the bonus part of class. And I'm gonna grab some chain. This is just 3.4 millimeter elongated chain. Any chain that has links that are large enough that you can get whatever clasp you're using through will work. I like to use a chunkier chain. And I usually pull off about two inches. So we're just gonna kind of eyeball this. And snip that apart. And then I'm going to use two jump rings. I'm sorry, two pliers to attach this chain with one jump ring. And the proper way of opening and closing a jump ring is we're just going to grasp it on either side and wiggle it back and forth until that loop 
meets. So now I have this on one side and it's always fun to put a little dangle do over here. Oh, sure. You can 100% put more than one um, strand in each of these holes. In fact, if I wanted to do a 10 strand bracelet, I wouldn't use the wire guardians because they're, they're pulling, they're taking up too much room. I couldn't get two wire guardians there. Um, but if with regular beading wire, or even if you wanted to use a wildfire or another stringing material, there is no reason why you can't put more, um, more strands through those loops. That's a very good question. Thank you very much for, um, for clarifying. And I'm just going to grab here is these are called easy lobster husks. They're just a, a type of clasp. Um, I wanted to use a lobster and I did not double check beforehand, but my, in fact, my lobster does fit. So good stuff. And the way that this guy closes, I don't even need a, um, I don't even need a jump ring for, I'm just gonna pull this around. And so now I have a clasp here on one side, but I did this for a reason. There isn't enough wiggle room or enough purchase here. So I wanna actually add a jump ring. I don't structurally need a jump ring in order to make this work, right? It went on, no problem. But oftentimes, especially when clasps are involved, a jump ring is your best friend, whether it is a round jump ring or an oval jump ring. It's just gonna give you that extra little wiggle, that extra little room that you need to be able to get your fingers in and get your bracelet clasped together. So now, whether I have a teeny tiny wrist or a little bit of a longer wrist, or maybe I want to do this as an anklet. Who knows? I have that option with an extender clasp. And of course, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a little, a little dangle on here, either a charm or a nice wrapped loop. So that is class today. We covered a lot of ground and I appreciate everybody hanging out with me until the very end. Nicole, we can go ahead and turn that camera back around so I can say goodbye to everyone. Thank you so very much for joining me today. Um, there is a Beatalon Facebook Live that I do or sometimes have a special guest join me for at 2 p.m. on Thursdays Eastern time over on the Beatalon Facebook page. So go ahead and join me over there. If you make today's project, be sure to post it on your socials using the hashtag make it with Michaels and the other hashtags that Nicole is going to put into the comments because I need to put them on a little sticky and put them on my computer because there are more hashtags. Um, feel free also to hashtag Beetle on because I love seeing what you make. You can follow me on Instagram as well. I'm at Meredith Joy Designs and I love being tagged and seeing what people make from class or just things that, that inspired you from the um, from the information that I gave. So thanks, Nicole, for being a great moderator. Thank you so much, everybody, for participating today. Don't forget, in 24 hours on the Michaels Community Classroom YouTube channel, you can watch this and tons of amazing other classes that Michael so generously has made available for all of us makers. I will be doing a jewelry making class every month, as will Sarah Lovecraft. So keep on the Michaels com class page and be sure to check out and join me for next time. So enjoy everyone. Thanks so much for participating and until next time, happy beating. <laughs>